I'm Amy Cherry. This local news is a service of Flagler County's Toyota dealer, Beaver Toyota, here to wow ya. It's a sad day. Former Palm Coast Mayor John Nets has died from complications tied to COVID-19. Current Mayor Melissa Holland called his death a devastating loss. Mayor Nets brought a fierce passion and love for the city of Palm Coast in his many years uh, serving the community in a variety of capacities. So we are mourning the loss of a true leader, a great friend, a great mentor to many of us, and his lasting impact will be seen throughout a variety of ways for our residents to understand the impact he had. Nets spent 15 years on Palm Coast City Council and helped define the city as it stands today. He moved to Palm Coast with his wife Priscilla from New Jersey in 1999 and most recently served on an appointed basis in the seat left vacant by exiting Councilman Jack Howell. Nets was hospitalized at Advent Health Palm Coast when he died Saturday. Nets was 78. Two people are arrested in a murder in Flagler County after an investigation that spanned more than a year, Karen Johnson reports. The Flagler County Sheriff's Office began investigating a homicide on October 12th of 2019 when two people were shot while sitting in a vehicle at the Circle K gas station at Beltaire Boulevard and Palm Coast Parkway. A man fired 16 rounds from a firearm at the victims in less than four seconds before fleeing on foot. The driver of the vehicle that had just been shot fled from the area and called 911. The passenger in the vehicle, 25-year-old Dion Jenkins, died in the car moments later before paramedics could reach him. The driver of the vehicle was also shot. Sheriff Rick Staley. I want to commend our team that never gave up on this most difficult case, and I believe this is the most extensive investigation in modern history completed by the Sheriff's Office. We were assisted by more than 20 agencies across the country, from Florida all the way to California and back, including the FBI and many other agencies. Business surveillance cameras in the area helped detectives until the shooter was identified as 26-year-old Marcus Chamblin and the getaway driver is 26-year-old Darius Bauer. Both suspects were taken into custody. Chamblin, the shooter, is charged with first-degree murder of Dion Jenkins and the attempted second-degree murder of a second Palm Coast man, as well as shooting into an occupied vehicle. Bauer, the accomplice, is also facing similar charges. Both men are being brought to Flagler County County to face their charges. For Flagler's Morning News, I'm Karen Johnson. Local health officials are trying to educate the public about the realities of COVID-19 vaccination distribution. John Arking has the details. Flagler County Emergency Management Director Jonathan Lord recently provided an update on the vaccine distribution situation, laying out the hard reality that there simply is not enough vaccine to accommodate everyone who's eligible to receive it. Approximately a week before the first vaccines for distribution to the public were received in Flagler County, the governor issued Executive Order 20-315 that required the inclusion of all individuals 65 years old or older, along with healthcare workers. For Flagler County, this instantaneously added over 30% of our population all at once. Ways to subdivide the group were considered, but ultimately they would not have been allowed by the state. It will be many months before there is enough vaccine available in our community for those who want it from this group or the population at large. Additionally, vaccinations are not allowed to be limited to just those who reside in Flagler County. The process must be available to people from other areas in the state on an equal basis. Lord says that last Monday when they opened up vaccination appointments, they were all booked within minutes and their phone system was tied up for hours. He says despite speculation that the system crashed, it did not, but instead was completely taken up to capacity. So what have we learned from this experience? Many ways of offering appointments have been explored, each with benefits as well as drawbacks to different parts of our populace. For some people, the online system is perfect. Appointments can be made in seconds. However, others, web-based ticketing is not something they've used before or internet access is not even available. For some people, calling us is the best way. For others, the slower process of making a phone call is not feasible. And for the county, it is the most resource intensive. Many feel a waiting list is best. However, others view that an unfair advantage to someone who may have more free time to call and request to be on a list and others do not have that time. Even though it takes a lot of resources, all three of these options are being offered with no single option having a priority over others. Lord says the state is working on a statewide appointment system they hope will be online this week and that Flagler County will continue to support the overall effort. But it's clear it'll be many months until there's enough vaccine for everyone. He also cautioned people against possible fake vaccine appointments links and said the only official ones are those found at flaglercounty.org slash COVID. From the WNZF Newsroom, I'm John Arking. 
Flagler Beach City Hall will be closed for more than a week after a positive COVID-19 case. Flagler Beach Police Chief Matt Downey. The interim city manager, Mr. Rick McFadden, who's our chief building inspector, advised he tested positive for coronavirus. And he wanted the public to know, as well as our staff, in the interest of transparency, that he had tested positive. And that City Hall and the building department, which he kind of splits time between both, because of his dual duties, will be closed so that the building can be cleaned and decontaminated. His interest, as is the city's, is the safety and welfare of our city staff, as well as the amazing community that we work with. And closing that building was the right thing to do. Staff will be working remotely, and any meetings, including the city commission meetings scheduled to occur inside chambers, will continue. The building is slated to reopen January 19th. Jacksonville University will contribute to medical education in Palm Coast. Jacksonville University's Provost Chris Sapienza says it will also offer other programs to students. There's room in there for the development of business programs, learning more about the industry, tech industry around the area, and also, you know, the arts and cultural programs that we're well known for. Provost Sapienza said that given time, Jacksonville University would pay close attention to what the Flagler County community needs and offer programs to fill those needs. Tomorrow, how did officials at Jacksonville University decide on Palm Coast? From the WNZF Newsroom, I'm Rich Carroll. And now you're up to date on Flagler's Morning News. I'm Amy Cherry.